today we're looking at Teledyne Technologies. Uh, as you saw from the uh, screen when, we, when you first looked at the video, I said do not buy this momentum stock yet. And that's what I wanted to talk about with you. Now as you can see, first of all, these are our Bollinger Band indicators. You learn how to set up all my indicators down below in the description. I have videos for each one of them. Shows you how I set them up, what values I use, so your screens can look like mine. Uh, one thing we want to take a look at, you know, is, is we've got a you know pretty good uptrend, really starting back here at this 52-week low. Uh, it you know had some consolidation, a little bit of pullback. If you like the Elliott Wave, there are a couple of you know waves in here. I'm not much of an Elliott Wave uh, person myself. I did try it, uh, didn't really like it, so I don't use them in my trading. Uh, but anyway, you've got some uh, you know some pullbacks. You, you've got a nice trend, a nice uptrend. Uh, you've had some pretty substantial pullbacks in this Bollinger Band to the one ATR, which, you know, I usually don't see them on a momentum stock like this pull back quite this far, but those are tremendous buying opportunities if you do see them. You know, I like Teledyne Technologies. I would like to get long in it. Uh, I can't get long right here. You know, it's above the one ATR, pushing into the two ATR. You know, what I would really like to see, actually I'd like to have been looking at it right, you know, right here, uh, which I guess was uh, the 21st. This was a good buy opportunity here, especially if you could have got it down toward the bottom of this week. Uh, you know, today or Friday, it, it finished a little high. It hasn't opened yet this morning, so I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, in fact, it may open while we're doing this video, and if it does, we'll talk about the open. But, you know, I would like to see it pull back into this area again, uh, or, or potentially maybe consolidate, you know, so if the one ATR band catches up. You know, it has shown some support at the one ATR band, so that's a potential buy. Certainly the main is a better buy. You know, if you look at the, at the bars down here, you know, we were getting some, you know, reduction in that momentum and that uptrend. So, you know, we're in a buy area as opposed to trying to buy it right through here where we were pushing the tops of uh, this uh, set of bars as they go up. We'd rather see them coming back down, you know, and maybe even turning back up before we try to go along. Uh, I think that uh, it, I, you know, it would probably consolidate some here. I don't know. It's gonna it's gonna test this 52 week high, see if it can break it. If it doesn't break it, then you can get some consolidation before another move up. But there's really no reason to think we're not gonna have a move up continue. Uh, I would look at a couple of different trades if I wanted to get in this. You know, you could do a put credit spread uh, in this area you know, for maybe seven to 14 days. Uh, you could do some sort of diagonal. Uh, you could probably do a calendar. You just have to be real careful with it uh, be, because there is a, quite a bit of movement through here. So your calendar, even if you're right, could turn into a loser. You know, I would say most of the calendars that I lose m money on, certainly the ones I take the largest losses on, are the ones that I actually had picked the direction correctly. It just accelerated too fast in, in the direction I picked. You know, so you got to be careful with now the market just opened because you heard the bells. Uh, but so we'll see when the, uh, I, I want a delayed, this this is a simulated account I'm looking at, so it's got a delay. You, see, you won't see the bar show up initially. Uh, but we'll take a look at it if it shows up while the video is still going. So let's take a look at the uh, other indicator that we use. This is the wave indicator. And you're seeing the same thing. You know, the only thing that the wave indicator shows you is that it really didn't, you know, it just barely touched the buy zone here. So, you know, when I said, you know, on the Bollinger Band indicator, when we were looking at it, I said, if you could have bought it right in this area, that would have been perfect. Well, you can really see that buy area on the wave indicator. But we also see that we've got pullbacks into the yellow and red lines quite a bit, too. So that would seem to indicate to me that we really want to buy more around the yellow line. So that would probably be more what I would look for, you know, until I, if I'm looking to go long in it. One big concern I have, though, is as we go through the indicators, is the RSI is overbought. You know, that that yes, it, yes, it can continue overbought for a while, as you see back in here, but this reduces the probability of the trade because the, you know, it does. That's not going to hold this high RSI forever. It's either going to pull back or it's going to consolidate. You know, this was kind of an aberration here, as it did continue really. It did consolidate through here, but. It did continue higher. This was an earnings event, so you really can't count that. But most of the time, this RSI is going to pull it back down. Uh, I would not 
I, again, I still couldn't go along here. The RSI is telling me no. The wave indicator is telling me no. My Bollinger Band indicator told me no. So there's just no way I could go along right here, even though I really like this stock and would be looking for an entry. In fact, I would probably put an alert for right in this area and then check it every day and see where it was at. And, and, and you're, you're certainly your entry level could change. Now, just because I put an alert here doesn't mean I would go along here. I, I would rather put an alert right here for a long and then bump it up each day as this wave continues up. Let's look at our uh, uh, moving averages. We do have you know, an increased separation between them, and, and before I go long, I'd like to see this gap narrow some. Uh, you know, These are the areas that are better to go long where, where these gaps are, are the most narrow. If you can get long in here, you know, this also gives you an idea of other potential long areas. You know, it is held the 30-day uh, EMA pretty well going up, so that's another indicator that this this is your buy area right here. Uh, the 50-day also held right here, you know, at a momentary it closed below it, and then it gapped up the next day. So, you know, really, if you look at all the indicators combined, which is what I do, you know, my buy zone is between the blue and the the blue 20-day EMA and the yellow 30-day uh, MA. That, that's really the buy zone I want to get into. Or if I'm going to sell a put credit spread, that, that's the place I'd want to sell the put credit spread. Let's take another look going back up through the indicators. Uh, see where that area is. So we're looking at a 340 to a 335 according to this indicator. So where does that show up on this? So 340 is right here. The yellow line, I mean the yellow line here. And 335 is right here, which is the red line. Again, it lines up perfect of what we look at as a buy area based on previous price action on the wave indicator. And we'll take a look at the Bollinger Bands, see how that matches up. You know, the 340 is right at this mean, and the 335 is just above the 1 ATR to the downside. So all three indicators are showing the same buy area and the same buy zone. That's a good sign. Uh, you know, the main thing is we're trying to look for a high probability trade. It doesn't mean it can't continue up from here. It just means the likelihood of it continuing higher from here is less than if we bought it back in here for it to continue higher for a profitable trade. And, and that's what these indicators really, that's how I use them, is what they really tell me. And those are the things that I look at you know, when I'm going through these stocks. It, it's almost more about when not to make a trade as opposed to, oh, here's right here's where you make the trade. Uh, you know, I know that you know this area through here is not a high probability trade area. Yes, it would have worked, but again, high probability trade area is what we're looking for. Much better to be in this area if we're going to go long. And, and I get, think there's a lot of strength here in Teledyne. So yeah, I would I would be looking for a long. I am looking for a long. And if you you know st stay uh, tuned to the channel, and you may see where I actually take a trade or see the results of a trade I took. If you like this video, please subscribe. Please like the channel. Please let me know what you think. If you have any questions or comments on this or any other trade, uh, just let me know, and I appreciate your time.